Thank you. Further debate? Member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I rise to support the motion put forward by my colleague uh, from Scarborough Asian Court to commemorate the massacre of Nanjing. I want to thank Ms. Wong both for bringing forward the original bill and for bringing forward the motion today. There's no question in my mind, Speaker, that this is a significant historical event. It deserves recognition, and it deserves recognition in an act debated and adopted and enacted by this legislature. As you're well aware, Speaker, in 1937, Imperial Japanese forces engaged in a brutal act of massacre and rape, targeting soldiers and civilians in the Chinese city of Nanjing over a period of six weeks. The government of China states that almost 300,000 people were killed, a horrendous number. Speaker, one of the most haunting images that came out of that massacre, not the goriest, not the most gruesome, but one of the most haunting, was that of an infant abandoned in a devastated railway station, alone on a platform, building destroyed around it, crying. And that picture, I think, symbolized the desolation, the horror of that assault on that city. Those events did occur. They did, in fact, happen. Although they're remembered in China and parts of Asia, the knowledge in the rest of the world is limited. And in Japan, the reality is contested or denied by right-wing and nationalist groups. Uh, Dr. Wong gave me a great honor. He invited me to a press conference earlier this year uh, to talk about this motion, to talk about this initiative. And interestingly, at the press conference, a number of those who were participating talked about the communications they'd received from Japan denying the reality. And to my surprise, I started getting postcards from Japan telling me how people in China welcomed the occupiers, welcomed the Imperial Japanese forces, and that everything had been fine in Nanjing, that this was in fact simply a fiction. But that's not true, Speaker. That's not even faintly, vaguely true. That is a fiction. Last year, the newspaper, The Guardian, reported that the Japanese government was withholding funds from UNESCO because of documents related to the massacre. And they wrote, Japan was holding back more than 34 million pounds, I guess about $50 million, in UNESCO funding following a protest against the listing of documents related to the Nanjing massacre. Japan, one of UNESCO's biggest funders, warned last year that it might pull the funding after the UN cultural and scientific body agreed to Beijing's request to register disputed Chinese documents recording the mass murder and rape committed by Japanese troops after the fall of the Chinese city of Nanjing in 1937. Speaker, as you are well aware, countries, people that don't recognize the reality of their history continue that act of aggression. To not recognize that reality, to deny what happened, is to dishonor all those who were cut down. <laughs> Speaker, in my mind, it is entirely clear that we need to face up to and acknowledge the reality of the brutality of the 20th century. We need to be clear that economic chaos and the great power nationalism that was used by dictators to secure and hold power and the use to which they put that power was a horrendous experience for humanity. If we want to help ensure that we don't repeat the mistakes and massacres of that time, then we need to first remember that they actually happened, to ignore all those who would deny that they were real. We need to remember that assumptions of racial or national superiority lead to the very darkest nights of human experience. We need to remember that scapegoating of national groups, religious groups, ethnic groups, when mixed with explosive anger over desperate economic circumstances, can lead to this kind of large-scale human tragedy, these kinds of large-scale human crimes. For the right-wing and nationalist forces in Japan that claim that the massacre never happened, it is very important, very important that the leaders of that country know the reality is understood and acknowledged and recognized around the world. And we in this chamber, 
can help with that project, can help acknowledge the reality, make it undeniable, undeniable. Our taking a position limits the room that those demagogues have to operate within. Frankly, our acknowledgement is valuable in its own right. For the survivors and the descendants, it's important that they're honoured and that their memory is kept alive. For the people of Ontario, there's also recognition that we all came here by different ways and that our history, our history here is rooted in Asia as it is rooted in Europe, as it is rooted in Africa, and that our makeup as a society has been touched by these historic events and they are as valid and real a part of us as any tragedy or crime against humanity that happened in Europe over the centuries. We are a people of many origins, and it is well that we learn all parts of our origin story. Speaker, it's my hope that this motion passes. It's a good motion. Again, I want to commend the MPP for bringing it forward. As she had said earlier, hundreds of thousands of people in the GTA are of Chinese descent. The Chinese population of Ontario, of Canada, is substantial. It is a vital part of our social fabric. The people of Chinese descent have helped build this country from the time of building the railroads across the continent to this very day. And I'm very pleased that the City of Toronto passed a motion supporting this setting up of a National Day of Commemoration or an Ontario Day of Commemoration. I'm glad that Peel did the same. And I, I do want to thank Dr. Joseph Wong and Alpha. I want to thank Ms. Olivia Chow. I notice Kristen Wong Tam is here, a great counselor from downtown Toronto. Uh, and all of you who are here today, you are doing your part to make history alive, to acknowledge what is real, and to try and stop repetition of the horrors that we saw a century ago. But I also want to say, Speaker, that it's time for this Liberal government to act. Ms. Wong has done her part. She brought forward a bill. It was passed. She's brought forward a motion today. If it doesn't pass, um, frankly, <laughs> it will be unbelievable. It will pass. Uh, but I want to note, uh, she spoke before about the commemoration of the Ukrainian Holocaust, the Holodomor. That bill came forward in February of 2009, first reading. Second reading, March of 2009, adopted and in place by April of 2009, a few months. Uh, it has been a number of months now since your bill came forward for second reading and was passed here. So it's about time, Speaker. This government has the power. It has a majority. It could send this bill to committee. We could have the hearings and we could go forward. Alternatively, this government could meet with the other two parties, and I think there would be general assent that now is the time. December 13th is coming. It's coming soon. So I think that having this motion is very, very handy because we have, what, a month, month and a half in legislative terms. I know that's lightning speed, but it is entirely doable. And so I, I urge this government to take this opportunity to use its full power, to use the cooperation of the other parties in this legislature to ensure that we don't pass another December 13th without this day being marked, without ministers of the Crown coming forward, speaking in their place about the importance of this historic event. Let's not have another December 13th pass without the opposition, without the NDP getting a chance to stand in this House and say, we should be proud of ourselves. We should be proud of ourselves. And so, Ms. Wong, again, you've done your part. It's time for the Premier and the Cabinet to act and bring this forward very rapidly, very rapidly, so that we can take this stand and let the word go out. Let other cities around the world know that this city has taken a stance. Let other countries know that in this country, we know where we come from. We know what made us who we are. We know what made our people what they are. And that we accept what is real and we will do everything we can. We will do our best to ensure we don't see a repetition. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity to have spoken to this issue, and I want to end with one last call. Please, please move this forward, make it real. December 13th, let's assemble here again and honour this day. Thank you.